Transportation is something that we wouldn't be a world without. Even during the earliest days of human existence, we've done our best to bring things with us to save us time and effort later. And with the invention of carts, roads, motor vehicles, boats, planes, and more, we've gotten better and better at moving things that almost nothing is impossible to transport if you're clever enough. Or, if you have a big enough ride to carry your stuff, as one may expect, humanity has done a lot over the years to try and push what they can transport so that they can get what they want somewhere else. Here now are 20 most epic transport operations in history. Number 20. Appomattox Hull now, you know you're doing a big operation when you have to plan for about four years just to get the job done. I mean, seriously, that's a whole lot of planning. And it clearly worked, given that I'm talking about it here. The journey was to take an Appomattox hull from South Korea all the way to Texas. And if you think about how long that journey is, just when you look at it from a map standpoint, and think about how long it would take to get there when you can actually make the venture, the Appomattox hull is the largest and heaviest cargo transported to date by Costco's fleet of semi-subversible heavy lift vessels. Of the process, correct. It's absolutely brilliant and unique. This is the first of its kind. Ensuring safe delivery of the hull was paramount of importance to this project, and the Shell and Costco project teams worked together to seamlessly make certain that this would be achieved. Now that may sound like an obvious thing, but remember, this is a huge item, and if even one thing happened with those fleet of ships, it likely would have brought them all down and sunk the hull in the process. Hence the various focuses on safety, along with the desire to plan this out for years before making that voyage. There's so much that could be said here about this project and the transportation of this hull, but the main thing I want to enforce is that this was a massive structure that was carried across the ocean by boats, multiple boats as I noted. Many of you might not think about how certain things get done, but when it comes to putting things into the water, you either have to build it in the water itself or you have to drag it to where it needs to go. And when it's the latter, as we've now shown, it's not the easiest thing to plan nor ensure that things go smoothly. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Buchanan Mansion if you've ever watched certain sitcoms or movies, you've likely seen people make jokes about how they would just transport their house to wherever they're moving next. The final episode of the series Home Improvement made that very joke in their final scene when they decided to leave Michigan and take their house with them via vehicles with more power. However, as funny as those scenes are, there are people who move massive houses with vehicles because they don't want to leave their beloved homes. Now, the Buchanan Mansion is one such example of that. This mansion had been around for 125 years, and the brick house weighed over 400 tons, yet they were able to get that behemoth onto a truck and begin rolling it down the road. When this happened in 2009, it was a slightly unprecedented thing, because as the movers of the house would reveal, there have been people who have moved houses short distances, but in the case of this one, they needed to move it several miles away, which at the time had never been done before. You can very easily imagine all the hardships it must have taken to get that house onto the truck that was transporting it, and then you have to think about what it would take for that truck to keep the house on it without sending the entire thing careening off and basically destroying it. There was a lot of rigging for both the truck and the house that had to be put into place, and equally as important was the route. If they had to go over a bridge, the mission would be a no-go from the start due to the heaviness of the load. But not only were they able to get it where it needed to be, they actually made plenty of headlines as they pulled it off. Though if you were to ask them what the cost of the move was, they were rather coy about it, and we'll just say that it was a lot. Number 18. NASA Aircraft Aircraft are a curious thing from the moment that they're built to the moment that they die. The reason being is that when you look at an airplane, especially a super large one, 
you'll wonder how they can ever fly in the first place, let alone transport people all over the world. And yet, they do it every single day whether we see them do it or not. Equally as curious is what happens when they're ready to be grounded for good. I mean, after all, you can't just leave a plane lying around where people could easily get access to it, right? So what do they do with these fallen aircraft? Well, they transport them, of course, such as when NASA had to do so in 2013, and they loaded up two of their aircraft to be sent off to be salvaged. A NASA Super Guppy transport plane swallowed two NASA T-38 aircraft whole in March of that year, right out on NASA Dryden Flight Research Center's back ramp. The planes in question had not flown in several years and were no longer airworthy, so they were sent off to El Paso, Texas, where they would be cannibalized for parts to keep other operated T-38s in El Paso flying. After being put to good use by stripping them of valuable parts, the aircraft would then be sent to an Air Force base in Tucson, Arizona, where their hides would remain for some time. That's actually something you'll notice when aircraft are disposed of. They're not just randomly dumped somewhere in the world. They're often put in dry and arid areas where their metals won't rust. That way, should someone need them for whatever reason, they could easily be found and searched for proper parts. Mythbusters in its early seasons went to one such airplane graveyard to test the myth of explosive decompression on a full-sized plane. Number 17. The Statue of Liberty Torch The Statue of Liberty is easily one of the most important monuments in the history of the United States. Located on Liberty Island in New York, it's meant to be a symbol for everyone who sees it both on land and approaching America. Though ironically, it was made by a Frenchman, and there are three Statues of Liberty. But the one in New York is the most famous. However, due to it being so old, as it was finished in 1886, the statue has undergone incredible amounts of work over the years, which includes being completely repainted and its torch having been replaced. In 1984, as part of the statue's centennial restoration project, the torch was removed from atop the monument and placed on display inside the Statue of Liberty's monument's pedestal. But then, in 2018, it was moved to a new Liberty Museum, where it would be the centerpiece of the place. To get the torch to where it needed to go, they had to have a special vehicle to transport it just over 150 meters. And would you like to know something interesting about that original torch? It was designed to light up at night so that it could be a true beacon to those who approached America. But when it lit up on that first night in 1886, you could barely see the light. It wasn't so much a torch as it was a candle, visible only to those who were up close. It took quite a while for them to figure out how to make it a bit brighter, and I'm sure the second torch was brighter when lit up. Number 16. The World's Largest Electromagnetic Ring Rewinding back to 2013, a massive journey was taken to transport what was, at that time, the world's largest electromagnetic ring. And this was not a simple trek, like what I've talked about with the Liberty Torch. This all begins in Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York and slowly makes its way to its new home at Fermilab in Batavia, Illinois. For the record, that's over 5,000 kilometers, and it definitely was not an easy voyage to get there. They had to move this ring by both truck and a barge just to get it to Illinois, and I don't mean that it went straight from New York to Illinois by road, that would just be too easy. They had to actually drive it to the coast, then barge it across the eastern coastline, down through the Gulf of Mexico, and then take rivers to get it up to the Midwest. A large team of Brookhaven Lab employees, which included engineers from the Collider Accelerator Department and experts from the Safety and Health Services Division, coordinated the journey, and we can only imagine the stress that they were under to try and get the ring to where it needed to go. But why all that stress? Well, aside from the ring being a key part of a project, the fact that it cost $25 million to make probably had a whole lot to do with it. The ring was so large, over 15 meters in diameter, and so heavy that it actually took months of planning to not only work out the route, but plan it out with officials to ensure that they would have clearance to get from one place to the next. Thankfully for everyone involved, they were able to make it work, and they even got there ahead of schedule. Number 15. Spar Platform 
Back in 2017, the substructure for the world's largest spar platform, Asta Hanstein, arrived in southern Norway after a nearly 27,000-kilometer journey at sea. So yeah, that is quite the journey. And when you realize how massive the platform was, you'll understand the effort that it took to get it to where it needed to be in Norway. The 200-meter-long structure weighed 46,000 tons and was transported on the world's largest heavy transport vessel, Dockwise Vanguard. So that alone should give you some context. It needed the largest transport vessel in the world to bring it to Norway. And if you're wondering why this spar platform was so important, they were opening up a new gas field in Norway that would allow the continent of Europe to be able to export gas to the Arctic Circle region, which was a first for Europe. While that may not sound important, it was, and they needed to establish a pipeline to help export the gas to where it needed to be. That spar platform was a vital component of the project, especially since they had already been working on the project for three years before the platform arrived. On another note, look at the size of the platform. It's so big that it makes the ships around it look tiny. It's a small wonder that they're even able to move that thing, and yet they were able to do it, and the project was able to continue all thanks to their efforts. Number 14. Wind Turbine Blade have you ever been going down the road and all of a sudden you see a semi-truck drive by you with a massive blade on its trailer? Well, more times than not, that blade is for a wind turbine, and they are that long because it helps them to put more energy out into the world. But as you may guess, moving them around is not the easiest thing in the world. However, the ones that you've seen on the road are nothing compared to the ones that have been moved around in China. When you watch this video, it's going to seem as though it's an optical illusion, but I assure you that it is the real deal. The Jinyang Wind Farm under the Three Gorges Jinyang Wind Power Project is the biggest wind power project in southwest China. Their blades are so long that they're over 75 meters end to end, not to mention that they weigh 19 tons. And as you can see, they're transported via trucks while being held at an angle and then the trucks have to go onto the roads that are 3,500 meters above sea level. This is easily one of those trucker jobs that no one would really want because of how dangerous it can be. Not to mention, to get the blade from point A to point B takes two weeks, part of which is simply going through hundreds of turns, all in the hopes that the next one isn't the one that will tip the blade over. So, you tell me, would you be brave enough to go on that truck journey? I'm not sure that I would, to be honest with you. Number 13. The Sky Bridge Sadly, I'm not talking about a true bridge, though I'm sure that would be quite an undertaking for any vehicle to do, depending on the size of that bridge. Instead, I'm talking about the Sky Bridge that's part of Hong Kong International Airport. The bridge is meant to let people walk from one terminal to the next, while also being able to allow aircraft to go beneath it. Even large aircraft can fit underneath that Sky Bridge, so it's useful for everyone involved, but in 2021, various crews were called in because they had to move the sky bridge. Overall, that should not have been that much of a problem if they had the right equipment. Their caveat, if you will, is that they didn't have a whole lot of time to try and move it. They were having to lift something over 5,100 tons over the space of three kilometers, and that's not something that you're supposed to rush. Thankfully, the teams were able to figure out a solution that would not require jamming up the airport and its travels. In fact, they were able to move that bridge to the first location within a few hours and then slowly set it where it needed to be later on. It's good to know that some people can still work under harsh conditions and crunching timelines. Number 12. The Seawall Ferry Wreck to be honest, I'm surprised that I haven't talked about a wreck sooner on this list. After all, when you have a wrecked vessel, whether it's one on a shoreline or at sea, oftentimes it needs to be removed for safety's sake. And yet, there are plenty of wrecks out there that won't be moved anytime soon. However, in the case of the Seawall Ferry wreck in South Korea, that was a different matter. The vessel capsized in waters off the country's Jindo Island in April of 2014, claiming more than 300 lives and was said to be one of the worst disasters in South Korea's history. Not only were 300 lives lost, but five of the members of the crew were never found after the initial wreck, and so a search for the bodies would continue for quite some time. Salvage crews towed the corroded 6,800-ton South Korean ferry and loaded it onto a semi-submersible transport vessel so that it could finally be brought to the shore. 
And when I say finally, that's because it didn't get moved for three years. That's possibly because they weren't sure that it could be moved, or they didn't want to, given all that happened on it. It is really difficult to say. The fact that they were able to move this vessel and bring it ashore does show that they had the technology and power to do so, so that's no small ferry. One has to wonder if every shipwreck that's currently adrift in our world will be brought back to the shore eventually, or if people will simply let them rest where they are so that they can be forever a part of the ocean. I suppose that only time will tell in the end. Number 11. The James Webb Telescope before anyone makes a joke about how telescopes are small and they don't need big vehicles to transport them, I'm obviously not talking about the telescopes that you have at home and look at the stars with. I'm talking about massive scale telescopes that are launched into space within Earth's orbit so that we can look at galaxies far beyond our reach. The James Webb Telescope was meant to be a successor of sorts to the Hubble Space Telescope. The new model featured some of the latest technology and would be able to not only look deeper into space, but also provide even clearer pictures of what our universe is like. It's currently up in space right now and getting data for NASA and others. But obviously, before it went into space, it had to go and be transported to the launch area. The Webb telescope was packed in a 30-meter long container with additional equipment and arrived from California on board the MN Calibri, which sailed the Panama Canal to French Guiana on a 16-day voyage. They even made sure the path that they were taking was dredged up a bit more to help them get through smoothly, and that's exactly what took place. It was transported safely, then launched into space, and we're going to be seeing the results of this telescope for decades to come. Well, hopefully at least. Number 10. Steam Generator Given that I just talked about a revolutionary telescope, showcasing a steam generator doesn't sound all that impressive. But you know, everything has a purpose, and in this case, I'm talking about a heat recovery steam generator that weighed a whole hell of a lot and had to be transported to New Jersey. Now you have no idea what the point of this thing is, and that's fine because I will explain. It was part of a new power plant that was being built in 2018, and the cost of the entire project would be $600 million. But just this steam generator alone was about $200 million of that. So yeah, getting it down the river so that it could access New Jersey and become part of that power plant, that was a pretty important thing. Thankfully, they were able to pull it off without any issues, and I'm sure if there were issues, someone would have been steaming mad. Number 9. The Big Merino I will admit that this next one is a little bit weird, but that is humanity for you after all. In Australia, there is a giant concrete statue of a ram that is known as the Big Merino aka Rambo, and why it's called Rambo, I would rather not ask. As you can see, it's a rather impressive structure, and you can get why people would want to go and visit it. It was originally built in 1985 and was a popular tourist destination. However, by the time that 2007 had come around, people weren't going to it as often, and that's where the fun twist comes into play. Wanting to bring both attention to the statue and their stores, a bunch of local businesses came together to fund the moving of the statue so that it would be closer to their town. It took a rather large truck to pull it off, but in the end, that's exactly what they ended up doing. Number 8. Bullwinkle the Bullwinkle oil rig is located in the Gulf of Mexico and is a massive offshore platform that stands over 1,700 feet tall. That makes it one of the world's tallest man-made structures. It was built in the 1980s and is a remarkable feat of engineering. It extracts oil and gas from deep beneath the ocean floor. It's known for its distinctive tripod-like design and also houses a small community of workers. But despite its grandiose size, it's actually relatively environmentally friendly, using a gravity-based structure to stay stable. But as you can guess, once you build an oil rig, you need to go and put it somewhere, and in this case that meant dragging it out to sea. As you can see in this picture, it is huge compared to the boat that's dragging it around. Number 7. Radioactive Waste now, I'm not going to make jokes about the next one for the simple reason that it's a very serious business. Due to various nations partaking in the creation of nuclear weapons and the building of nuclear reactors, we have a whole lot of radioactive waste that needs to be stored somewhere 
so that it can't be a danger to people. And yes, this radioactive waste needs to be transported from site to site so that it can either be put away for safekeeping or reprocessed so that it can't hurt anyone else. There are many attempts to try and pacify this waste so that things don't get worse or the waste can be straight up dumped without issue. As you may have guessed, there are a lot of people who are not exactly comfortable with what's being done with nuclear waste and they want all types of nuclear processes stopped immediately. Number 6. The Megalith Now, I feel it's a good idea to do a little more low-key of an entry after talking about something so serious. So how about talking about a giant rock being moved? Does that sound fun? This rock in question was a megalith that was transported by an incredibly large vehicle. And that vehicle is called levitated mass. It's a much different kind of transport than you would expect. For example, you may wonder why the rock, which is nowhere near the size of the vehicle, isn't just being put on something like a rock truck or a similar vehicle to get it taken to where it needs to go. Well, that's because if it was placed in a vehicle like that, it may actually get damaged. Because if you look closely, you're going to notice the megalith is literally being lifted off the ground to ensure that nothing happens to it. Number 5. Elephants Now, I'm not talking about statues of elephants or vehicles called elephants. I'm talking about the actual living, breathing, moving elephants. Animals getting transported all over the place is nothing really new because they have to be transported for a whole lot of reasons, both personal and business-wise. But when it comes to transporting elephants, it's not something that you hear about being moved around often. The reason that the elephants named Kamala, Swarna, and Maharani were moved on a 400-kilometer trip was because they were being taken to their new zoo home in Washington, D.C. To ensure that the elephants were all right, there were cameras that were monitored constantly throughout the trip so that if something happened to the elephants, they would know about it. They were brought to the zoo so that they could join a set of fellow Asian elephants and create a larger herd for them to live with. Number 4. Crawler Transporter 2 now, here's a twist. I'm not necessarily talking about a massive thing being moved here in a transport capacity, but instead, I'm talking about something that does all of the transporting. You know how NASA has all of those rockets and everything that they love to launch into space? Well, have you ever wondered what it was like to be the vehicle that puts those things onto the launch pad? That honor goes to the vehicle like the Crawler Transporter 2, which weighs, well, a heck of a lot. And because of that, it can move a heck of a lot, which includes just about anything that NASA needs it to move, like shuttles and rockets and so on. It's also capable of being self-propelled, which is why it got the Guinness World Record for being the largest self-propelled vehicle of its kind. Number 3. The Gray Whale We've all heard the stories of whales being washed up on the shoreline. The danger is that if they're alive, they have to be placed back in the ocean quickly or else they may die. In one case with a gray whale, it would be washed ashore in 1997 and was taken quickly to a nearby sea world where it could be nursed back to health. It had been infected with whale lice and had serious injuries that would have ensured its death had it simply been placed back into the ocean. It weighed 758 kilograms and was 4.2 meters long. Oh my gosh. My God. And judged to be only a few days old, which again would have meant death if she had just been placed back into the ocean. Thankfully, after nursing that whale back to full health and taking the time to study it a little bit, it was put back into the Pacific so that it could live freely. Ironically, they put tags on the whale so that it could be tracked for 18 months and to thus learn more about the whale's movements. And after a few days, those tags actually fell off. Number 2. GE Turbine The GE Turbine is a powerful machine that's used to generate electricity and works by spinning large sets of blades using either steam or gas. As those blades turn, they rotate a generator inside and that produces the power. 
They're widely used in power plants all over the world, which helps to provide electricity to homes and businesses and industries. These turbines are a crucial part of our modern energy infrastructure, and they supply electricity to literally millions of people every single day. Now, these turbines can come in a variety of sizes, everything from as small as a car to enormous as a house, and the biggest ones are absolutely gigantic, even taller than a 20-story building, designed for large-scale electricity generation. That size depends on the power capacity that's required, with larger turbines producing more electricity. You know that something is important and delicate to move when people are given a warning ahead of time that a massive convoy is coming to transport an item. In this case, I'm talking about a massive general electric turbine, and between it and the transport that was moving it around, it was over 100 meters long and 6 meters wide. So yeah, they were going to need to have a wide berth for that thing, plus it wasn't going to be that fast. So it's good that people were given a heads up so they wouldn't be caught behind it. Number 1. Submarine Meet the U-505 submarine, a vessel that is so huge that it's as long as a city block and weighs three times as much as the Statue of Liberty. That alone should give you some context as to why this is a massive transportation operation. The irony was that this was not an operation at sea, but on land. The submarine had been part of a museum, and they needed to move it to a new location. It wasn't easy, but they had to take several days to get it to where it was, to be propped up and posed. But in the end, they did get it there. Well, that's all from the realm of massive transport operations and how they all got done without destroying everything in process. Were you impressed that these transport operations were done and that they were done so successfully? And do you know of other instances where massive transport efforts were done and seemingly boggled the mind? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. While you're there, you should check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.